Der heutige Tag der Menschenrechte fällt zusammen mit den Klimaverhandlungen in Kopenhagen. Aus unserer Sicht, der Sicht der Heinrich-Böll-Stiftung, werden Menschenrechtsverletzungen und das Recht auf Nahrung viel zu wenig in den Klimaverhandlungen diskutiert und dort auch nicht wirklich politisch bearbeitet. Wir möchten ganz gerne, dass die Klimapolitik endlich mit der Menschenrechtsagenda verknüpft wird. Das Recht auf Nahrung muss Einzug halten in die Klimaverhandlungen, weil wir längst wissen, dass Klimawandel ganz massive Auswirkungen auf die landwirtschaftliche Produktion hat. Es sind Kleinbäuerinnen und Kleinbauern, die massiv vom Klimawandel betroffen sind. Sie leiden unter den Dürren, sie leiden über, äh, unter Überschwemmungen. Antworten auf den Klimawandel müssen deswegen unbedingt das Recht auf Nahrung beinhalten. Antworten auf den Klimawandel müssen Kleinbauern und Kleinbäuerinnen einbeziehen, weil sie lokal sehr häufig die besten Antworten darauf haben, wie man sich an den Klimawandel anpassen kann. Sie müssen teilhaben können an den Strategien. Es wird für Klimaanpassungsmaßnahmen, gerade auch in der, im landwirtschaftlichen Bereich, Milliarden von Geldern geben. Und unser Anliegen ist es, dass Menschen mitsprechen daran, dass sie wissen, wie Anpassung an den Klimawandel möglich ist. Wir befürchten, dass viele Milliarden, die in, den, in die Klimaanpassung flie fließen, die Menschen außen vor lässt und eventuell auch Strategien befördert, wie beispielsweise genmanipulierte Nutzungspflanzen anzuwenden, die aus unserer Sicht nicht die Antwort sind auf den Klimawandel. Wir möchten verhindern, dass falsche Wege gegangen werden. Unser Ziel ist es, die Menschen zu befähigen, Antworten selbst zu finden. Die Heinrich-Böll-Stiftung hat gemeinsam mit der Columbia Law School eine Studie veröffentlicht, die thematisiert, wie das, der Klimawandel und das Recht auf Nahrung miteinander kombiniert werden können. Wir möchten, dass das Recht auf Nahrung Teil der Klimaverhandlungen wird, Teil des Klimaverhandlungsprozesses. Das Recht auf Nahrung muss dort integriert sein. Wir geben mit dieser Studie Empfehlungen darüber, wie genau das Recht auf Nahrung in den Klimaverhandlungsprozess, in die Klimaanpassungspolitiken etc. integriert werden können. Well, the publication of this report by the Columbia Human Rights Institute and with the support of the Heinrich Böll Stiftung is a unique opportunity to rethink the relationships between the climate change agenda and the human rights agenda. I think we have to face the reality. The impact of climate change on human rights and on the right to food in particular shall be massive in the next few years. We already see these impacts. We know that in the next few years, whole regions will find it more difficult to feed themselves as a result of changes in temperature and more extreme weather-related events which have to do with global warming. Now, States make commitments to reduce emissions and therefore mitigate climate change, and I welcome these important commitments. But we must also realize that in implementing these reductions, states may use a variety of techniques. They have many flexibilities as to which mechanisms they can prefer in order to achieve these reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. For example, they may set up the trading of emission credits by cap-and-trade schemes, They may develop biofuels as an alternative to fossil fuels in transport. It is hugely important to realize that such mechanisms can have differentiated impacts on human rights. And if they are not very carefully monitored, if they are not guided by human rights considerations, they may actually have negative impacts on the human rights of some of the most vulnerable populations on Earth. For example, Carbon credit schemes under the Clean Development Mechanism could have a very negative impact for indigenous peoples or other populations living off the products of the forests. Or uh, alternatively, you could see agrofuels plantations developing, as we already see over the past few years, with um, very serious risks for farmers depending on the land for their livelihoods, uh, who risk being evicted as a result of the development of these large plantations for the production of agrofuels. The right to food, therefore, should be taken into account 
in the way we meet the challenge of climate change. And the right to food should, for example, guide impact assessments, participatory processes, in order to ensure that the measures we take and the measures we must take in order to combat climate change will not have a detrimental impact on the livelihoods of the most vulnerable populations. The right to food also indicates some positive solutions which should be explored more in depth in the future. In particular, we have to realize that today, agriculture is one of the most important um, culprits for the climate change which we are witnessing. It is responsible for 14% of greenhouse gas emissions, and you could add to this 19% uh, as a result of deforestation to create pastures or to create farmland to extend agricultural production. In other terms, agriculture is not just a victim. It is also responsible for the amount of greenhouse gas emissions which are produced and for the acceleration of climate change today. We can change this. We can change this by encouraging reliance on more sustainable forms of production, by encouraging agroecological techniques, by encouraging the use of low external input agriculture, the use of biopesticides, manure in the fields instead of chemical fertilizers, uh, for example. We can also develop agroforestry much more than it has done up to now. There are certain very promising projects in, in Tanzania and Malawi on a very large scale which show the feasibility of these projects and show that agroforestry can be a solution not just to preserve the soils and to limit climate change but also to raise the incomes of the poorest families. These agricultural practices which are low external input, which are low tillage, which are dependent on locally produced inputs such as biopesticides or manure, these agroecological techniques can not only have beneficial impacts for the environment, they can also raise the incomes of farmers who all too often um, have no access to credit and find it much more difficult to rely on expensive external inputs. And I therefore would encourage more convergence between the agendas of the right to food and of climate change mitigation strategies, because I believe these two agendas, which are for the moment sometimes in in contradiction, in competition with each other, they can be mutually uh, supportive and they can be complementary. And therefore, I would, I would encourage um, the reading of the report, which is now available on the website of the Heinrich Böll Stiftung and which is available on the website of the Special Rapporteur on the Right to Food, in order to identify the very concrete, practical ways in which the two agendas can be um, uh, made to work together. Thank you.